Here we go. We ready. Marty G's, we ready to rip. Here we go, y'all. This is it. The heavyweight <laughs> champion. Here we go, y'all. It's showtime. I'm Master Scientist Grant Hank, and I'd like to welcome you into the Science Lab of Grant Hank. And in today's lesson, we're going to learn about dry ice, and we're going to look at dry ice and see how it impacts indicators of various kinds, which we have set up here. But before we get into this lesson, I want to talk to you about safety, because in working with dry ice, which is very cold, it's minus 78.5 degrees Celsius, so that's extremely cold. So one bit of caution when working with dry ice, make sure that you have insulated gloves, which we have right here, and also you do not let the dry ice touch bare skin because dry ice can cause frostbite. So now that we have that piece done, let's look at some vocabulary. There's two things I wanna get across. In today's lesson, we're going to be working with this thing called an indicator. So we want to understand what is an indicator. The next thing we're going to talk about is a process called sublimation. So we're going to break these two down. And once you understand what they are, we're going to move forward in this lesson with the vocabulary now behind us. So let's look at indicators. An indicator is a substance that changes colors at certain pH values and can help determine whether a sample is an acid or a base. Once again, an indicator is a substance that changes colors at certain pH values and can help determine whether a sample is an acid or base. Let's talk about sublimation. Sublimation is the conversion of a solid directly into a gas without first becoming a liquid. Once again, sublimation is the conversion of a solid directly to a gas without first becoming a liquid. So we got the vocabulary out of the way. We know what an indicator is. We know what the process of sublimation is. Now, before we get in, I have one thing to put out to you. I call it the science factor question. And that question is, what percentage of the atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide gas? Once again, what percentage of the atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide gas? 
So now that we know what an indicator is and we know what sublimation is, let's dig into our experiment. So before we get started, the first thing we're going to do, because we're working with dry ice, is we're going to put on our safety glasses and we're going to put on our insulated gloves. So if we look here, we have five indicators across here and the names are listed on the front so you can read it. The Brom Casal green, that color here is blue. Uh, we have the universal indicator, which is purple. We have the phenol red, which is reddish, rose red. We have the methyl red, which is an orangish color. And we have the brome thymol blue, which is a bluish color. So what we're going to do in this lesson is it's almost going to be like a, a indicator lottery. So we're going to play the lottery here with these indicators. And I'm going to see if you can guess the right color when we add in carbon dioxide. So we're going to add in a solid carbon dioxide and I want you to watch what happens and I want to see if you can guess that color. So if you have a pen or a pencil, you should be keeping score. Matter of fact, anytime you see Grand Hank, you should run and get yourself a pencil and a paper because I'm always going to challenge you to either write something down, think about something and be able to remember what you have learned. So here we go. Let's look at our first sample here. So I'm going to open the dry ice. I'm going to grab some out. So we see the color right here, right? This color is looking real good. It's nice and, and a bluish color. And now let's drop it in and you watch what happens. So if we see it as it's, as it's going through its change, guess what? It's changed to a color of uh, yellow here. So we started out. Let's move this back here so you can see the reference sample. So it started out uh, a nice blue color, and now we see that it is a yellowish color. And so what is happening here, Grand Hank? I see this process. I see this bubbling. It looks like something out of a movie here. Well, this is what you're watching, the process of sublimation. So you're watching this solid carbon dioxide go directly into a gaseous phase. So we're starting from solid to gas. There's no liquid in the middle, but what it's doing is it's bubbling through the middle. And that's what we see right here. So let's move along. We're doing, we're having a good time. So let's get your pens and paper ready. Now I'm working with this universal indicator and all of these indicators have been pushed into the basic range. So these are all basic on a pH scale. Now, let's see what we do when we drop some more of this uh, carbon dioxide in our next one. So now you see here that this is a purplish color. So what's your prediction? What color do you think is gonna change when Grand Hank drops this dry ice in? Well, you got enough time? Well, here we go, let's drop it in. So we got purple, and now we're going to see what happens. What you're going to do, Grand Hank? What's happening right here? You're watching it, not me. So you see, we went from a purple, uh, a really nice purple color, too. And now we're looking at a you guys tell me what color that is, because I I'd like to hear it from you guys. So if you see, we have uh, now it looks like almost an orangish color. And we went from see our reference here. Uh, and now you see that we have a orange color and look, you're still enjoying the sublimation process. So let's move along. Let's look at another one of these things because I'm having fun. I know you are. So if we look at this next one, this phenol red, this is interesting. It's a rosy color. Now, what's your prediction here? What do you think is going to happen when Grand Hank drops in some carbon dioxide in its solid form? We're going to see what that color changes. So here's the lottery. Are you winning the lottery? Do you have any of these yet? Well, let's drop it in. Let's see what we got. So we drop it in. Boom. It started out rosy red. And now what color is it? So you see, as these things move along, I want you to watch the reference phase in front and you'll see the difference. So we know something is changing here. We're getting a change from a basic and we're moving it into the acidic phase. So you're watching it here as this carbon dioxide sublimates through. It is creating 
a acidic situation here. So we've got water and CO2 together and we're getting uh, carbonic acid out of here and that's what's making this solution here uh, the color that it is and because it's moved from the basic phase into an acidic phase. Now, let's move our lottery along here. So you got this here, the next one, Grand Hank, is methyl red. So let's go into our box here, let's load up. And I want you to write down on a piece of paper, what color do you think is gonna change when Grand Hank drops this carbon dioxide in? What color do you think it's gonna change? Is it gonna be green? Is it gonna be yellow? Is it gonna be red? Is it gonna be violet blue? Only you and I can find out, and we're gonna do it right now, so Grand Hank, let's drop it in. So when we drop it in, boom! You're looking at it here, and it's looking real good. It look, it went from an orangish color, and now this thing is looking real good. It's looking at a nice, rosy red color, and this is a beautiful thing to see. And you see, everything's moving through here, and I wanna try something right quick. Since uh, this is interesting, we're dealing with carbon dioxide, so let's ignite this and let's bring it close to the carbon dioxide and let's see what happens. So you're watching it, watch this. Let's watch very close. You see, you see it going in and out and that's because the carbon dioxide is displacing the oxygen and it is, is gonna put this flame out if I bring it too close. So let's look at it again. Let's try it one more time. And you know, flames need oxygen to burn, and this beauty here will displace that oxygen, and that's why it'll go out. So let's try it again. Let's just lower it down. And I'm not gonna put it all the way in, but I want you to see how it influences it. You see it? And it went out again. So let's do this. Let's move on. I'm having a good time. You guys are too. This is our final one right here. So this is number five. We're going at this, uh, this brome thymol blue here. Now, it's a real nice blue color. I love it, you enjoy it even more. So let's get the final prediction of the indicator lottery. And if we win the lottery, if you match all these colors up, you will be today's brain. You will be the brainiest person watching Grand Hank right now. So let's do the final one. This looks real good. It's a nice blue, but what's it going to do? So now let's drop it in. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Boom. What's going to happen here? I see something, it's fighting, it's moving, it's doving, it's moving. And what color are we? Oh, there it goes, boom, there goes the dynamite. And you see right here in front of your face, it's a beautiful thing right here to watch. And I love it. You're learning about sublimation. You're learning about indicators, which indicators change colors when they come into the presence of an acid or a base. Let's answer the science factor question. The question was, what percentage of the atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide gas? And the answer is, the atmosphere is made up of approximately four hundredths of a percent carbon dioxide gas. Once again, the atmosphere is made up of approximately four hundredths of a percent carbon dioxide gas. That's the lesson here from the Science Lab of Grand Hank. If you like more of these type of things, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the share button, or go to our website at www.grandhank.com.